APAC Canterbury, bringing you trusted local news with Chris Lynch. APAC Canterbury, your budget-friendly airport parking. Book at airparkcanterbury.co.nz. Christchurch Mayor Phil Major, good evening to you. Good evening, Chris. Let's uh, cover off Sale GP. Was the right decision made to call off Saturday's race in Littleton, in your view? Yes, yes. To give you a bit of background, everything revolves around the Marine Protection Act of 1978. Now, we work very hard with Sale GP, us, Nati Feki, and Christchurch NZ to bring in the thing called the Marine Mammal Management Plan, and that just sat over the top of it, and that was to protect um, us, Nati Feki, um, the sailors actually on the boat, and Sale GP, because if someone had hit a, um, a dolphin and uh, there was no mitigation in place, all rot would set in, because the full wrath of the law would come down on top of you. The, the only way, and I was pleased to see Chris Luxon getting in amongst it a bit, um, saying the only way I feel that we can make it more palatable, we need to just soften up that law a little bit to make it a little bit easier because that, that's why we had to do the Marine Mammal Plan, just to protect everyone. So what needs to be softened in your view? Um, just about the speed around mammals. It, it, just need, it needs, just need to have a look at it, because 1978 is a long time ago. There were no falling boats back then. So um, thing, things have changed. Just, just got to make it easier to be able to get these um, big events like this, doing that sort of thing in, in Christchurch. I want to pick up on what Russell Coote said. I find it, and I'll quote, I find it astonishing that the amount of influence air we have over authorities here in New Zealand saying that DOC would not approve sail GP racing in Littleton without the approval from iwi. Do you share similar concerns or not? As I said, it all comes round to the um, the law from 1978. It's it's actually a bit of a bit of an ass to be honest. It, it, it could, I'm sure, it can be modified to make things a lot better for everyone. As a result of Saturday, is it fair to say that Sail GP probably won't be returning to Littleton? Uh, Sail GP prior to Saturday had actually already signed a contract with us to come back next year. So we'll be working hard with them. But if we get a change, and it, it won't be easy to change the law, it'd be bloody awful actually. But uh, if we can change the law a little bit to make life easier for everyone, then we don't have to jump so, through so many hoops. Hang on, so you're saying that we've already signed up again for next year, so Sale GP has uh, signed the dotted line to come back next year? Yes, they have. They did that before last weekend. Now, things have a habit of changing, as you can see on Saturday, but that's what it is. They've signed up before the weekend to come back here next year because they weren't supposed to be here this year, and, and all credit to our guys and Nadi Feki and if everyone that worked on it to get it turned around in 12 weeks. They actually and, need a medal. In that contract, is there a get-out-of-jail clause? I mean, is, how easy is it for them to relinquish that and say, no, sorry, we're not coming back? I, no, I don't know, sorry. I don't know the all details right. Are you frustrated though, because given given the the negative um, attention, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. Sunday, by all accounts, was fantastic, but the negative attention on Christchurch and those decisions um, has it overwhelmed the positive vibes that Sunday did bring? Do you accept that? Uh, no, the positive vibes on Saturday were absolutely fantastic. Um, and even on Saturday, I know there was some seriously upset people, but even on Saturday, people had had a bloody good time <laughs> in the hospitality and all that sort of thing. They, it was a, they were happy they were walking out and it, and it was good. You know, there, was, there were some grumpy people, don't get me wrong, um, but it, it wasn't that bad. They sort of realistic and said, oh, well, even over in San Francisco, a whale came onto the course and they stopped the racing over there. So it's the same same thing, or the weather could have been absolutely ghastly. So it was a great day, but it turned out, thank God, Sunday was good, otherwise we would have been in real strife. If Russell Coates is watching this now, what would you say to him in regards to bringing the race back to Littleton next year? Um, we're, we're always we're always open to talk, and I will be talking to the minister and uh, the minister that's in charge of this department. I don't know who it is, and see if we can find a way through to make it easier. Because we just had to, as I said, we just had to do this to to cover everyone so they didn't get in strife if something went wrong. All right, he didn't say what you'd say to Russell. What would you say to Russell? Come back, Russell. Come back, Russell. Is that it? 
Please come back, Russell. <laughs> of course, I'm, okay. it's good. It's good. Hey, it's great for the city. You saw what was happening in town and all the hospo bars, every, everything like that. It, the, the place was really going off. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Three Waters, of course, that's done and dusted now, but the the council released uh, another plan for the city's water infrastructure. Uh, And in a nutshell, why should we care? And this is quite a big project. It's, you know, it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of focus on water um, and to deliver it properly. We, we're actually sort of lucky that after the earthquake, a lot of our pipes got fixed. We're better off than some, um, but we've got, um, we're still, all, all our wells are good, in good shape. Our pumping stations are all in good shape. We've got to have put in a few more um, sort of charge tanks to make them a bit better, but we have got some leaky pipes as, as things get older. But like me, you start leaking a bit. <laughs> uh, you, yeah, things, things, things start going wrong. And we've got a lot of pipes that are, are nearing the end of their, their practical life. So we've got to keep on top of that. One of the things we've got is Wellington's got uh, 50% water leakage. We've got 27%. Now, we've got parts of town, if it leaks, the water will come out onto the road, and you see it. But we've mm. got a lot of parts of town where it's um, sandy or gravelly. It can be leaking for years, and you don't know because it just soaks into the ground. You never see it. What we are doing, we're spending a bit more money on water detection, finding leaks, but we go around at night time, mainly in winter, with directional um, headphones on and just walk up and down the streets and just listen to the um, water, because believe it or not, you can pick it up quite easily with all this new technology we've got. Okay. So how, how does this plan differ from Three Waters? Is it going to save ratepayers money? Is it going to cost more? What's your, what's your feeling on that? If, if, we, can, if we can stop stop leaks. And I must say, putting the water meters on and having everyone sort of go, oh, look how much water I'm using. It makes you think again. I I myself had a massive leak at home. We're using damn near four and a half thousand litres a day through a big leak in a in a in a shingly area and the water ran away. We had no idea it was leaking. It was only because we started charging for water, we fixed it. So if we can get our leaks under control, get them down to about 20%, it'd be nice to be a bit lower than that. Um, it stops us pumping a whole lot of stuff. I hate to think how much Wellington is spending on pumping and chlorinating their water to see it all run down the gutter, especially 50% of it. Let's briefly touch on uh, the Mona Vale thief. Has she been caught yet? No, not as far. This is bloody disappointing. This is this is not good. You know, there's, uh, as you say, electric scooter, wheelie bin. They go in at bedding plants, annuals, roses, ferns, you name it, that um, the tulips have been nicked for two years in a row. It's not necessarily all her. We can't, the, as you've seen, the photos are pretty, um, we need to probably invest in a better camera, I think, so that we can see what's going on. But we haven't been able to get a, uh, there's no car involved, so we can't get a rego off it. But I, I ask people, can you please, because all of these plants are put there for the benefit of the public and, and people that come and visit, they go to Mona Vale, it's a lovely place. Um, and it's not alone either, because the Botanical Gardens cop it as well, believe it or not. Um, so it's it's there for everyone to see, and it costs us a lot of money to replace them. And it's heartbreaking for the staff that are down there because they take real pride in, in the, the gardens they look after. It seems like we have a, a problem with uh, garden thieves at the moment in Christchurch, Phil, or is it just because, you know, when you're reporting on these things, it feels like it's happening all the time. You know, you've got the New Brighton domain, you've got, as you've just pointed out, Botanic Gardens, you've got the situation in Mona Vale. I mean, is it something that the council needs to look at and perhaps getting better investment in, you know, um, security cameras, do you think? I think, well, it wouldn't do any harm to to, um, to be able to um, identify these people. It might ne- not necessarily be the same person. And as, as you touched on, in parks, we get a lot of swings stolen, believe it or not. And that costs us a lot of money every year as well. And it all goes on to rates and we have to charge to get, to get them back. But we just put them in there for the good of everyone. It's bloody disappointing. It is. Phil Major, nice to speak with you. Thanks for your time this evening. Yeah.